Greetings, fellow Americans. I'm Will Watts, and I'm here to be your anchor as we sail through this week's episode. First off, we have some very important business to cover. As you all know, the 2016 election is coming up, so we sent reporter Cameron Fernandez into the field to gather the facts from Mrs. Hahn, who is one of our history teachers. The election day is almost upon us, Oilers, so we interviewed U.S. and world history teacher Ms. Hahn to give you all the information you need to get to those polls. In order to vote, a student must be 18 years old by election day, which is Tuesday, November 8th. They must be a U.S. citizen and a resident of California. Students can find their polling place by going online to the Secretary of State Alex Padilla's website. All you need to do is punch in your voting information and you can find your local polling place. Also, students can ask their parents. Um, they could also ask their government teachers. When I have students come to me and ask why they should vote, I do tell them that their vote counts. In order for a presidential candidate to win the election, they need 270 electoral votes. Whichever candidate wins the popular vote for each state, they win all electoral votes for that state. So popular vote does count and their vote does count. There's a lot at stake. Um, I think the questions come up, who is best to deal with the threat of ISIS? Who is the one person that can deal with the immigration crisis? Uh, who is the right person to nominate the next Supreme Court justice? Um, it is determined, or it has been determined, that in the next few years there will be future vacancies. So that's really going to determine how the Supreme Court um, runs itself in the next few years. If you're eligible to vote, make sure to perform your civic duty by participating in the presidential election on November 8th. Thanks, Cameron. Be sure to get out the vote, Oilers. Voting is not only a right, but an important part of being a U.S. citizen. Almost as important as MMET's upcoming show, The Beatles Story 1966. One, two, three! <laughs> APA's very own MMET has been hard at work to produce their upcoming show on November 3rd and 4th at First Christian Church. Let's take a look at the rehearsals and see what they're working on for their upcoming show. Freshmen and sophomores of MMET will be having a pre-show, and after that, all of the juniors and seniors will be playing all of the hits from Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys and Revolver by the Beatles. Wow, what an intriguing show. I sure can't wait to see it. Cross Country's competition season is ending soon, so Giovanni Tony Otto went out to ask them what they thought of their performance this year. Seeing as how the cross country season is coming to a close, we figured we'd interview the team and find out more about what goes into the sport. Um, a normal cross country practice is normally five to eight miles, and Mondays and Wednesdays we do distance days. Tuesday's usually a hill day. We'll run to Central Park, do some hills. Wednesday's a recovery day, we'll do about eight miles. Friday is like kind of like a take it easy run since we have a meet on Saturday. Uh, I joined cross country because I was, I originally did track my freshman and sophomore year and I love doing long distance running and it's what I want to do in college. So. I joined cross country because I played almost like every sport and all of them I just like to do because it was, uh, there was running involved so I thought cross country would be a good sport if all I wanted to do was run. Um, I've always liked running, like especially in middle school I joined cross country because my friends are doing it and I just really liked it. 
I actually started doing cross country when I was in fifth grade, so it was already a big part of my life, and uh, I was excited to do it when I got into high school and make new friends. Um, my favorite thing about cross country is how we're all really close. I love the family aspect; like we're really, we're really close. I like how cross country is like a family. Definitely just competing, knowing that like cross country is what you put in is what you get out of it. So it's kind of just in your own efforts, and it's very individualized, but it's within a team. To be a captain, you have to be able to relate with everyone. Just being like having a love for the sport. And you have to be motivated. Like you have to have like devotion and stuff. Know everyone. Like be friends with everyone. Like I always give little tips and pointers to everyone else. There's always room for improvement. We welcome anybody that has a good attitude and wants to work hard to run on the team. Great job on the season cross country. Next up, we have everyone's favorite segment, HB Bites. Colin Robertson went out to grab some grub at Pacific City. Today, HB Bites has taken a trip to the flavor town that is Burnt Crumbs. Located at Pacific City in lot 579, Burnt Crumbs is a killer sandwich shop that'll keep you coming back for more. We spoke with one of the co-owners to get some more details. Well, I actually started Burnt Crumbs uh, through a different business that we had. We started from food trucks. So originally we came from a, a company called The Burnt Truck and Dogzilla Hot Dogs. And then we opened a restaurant in Irvine called Burntzilla. And then this is actually our uh, second restaurant called Burnt Crumbs. And we always wanted to do like a full size sandwich concept. Um, with our trucks we do mini size sliders and we've gotten a lot of requests to do something more full size. And we just really like sandwiches. So we always thought that would be a cool idea to do. For us, I think our sandwiches are the best because we make everything from scratch. I think uh, most sandwich shops that you go to, they'll buy like deli meats from somewhere and then all they do is slice it. They get bread from somewhere. Uh, here we try to bake everything in house. Uh, all the sauces we make in house, even all the meats that you have, are it's all hand cut, hand breaded, handmade. My, po my most popular item I would say would be the spaghetti grilled cheese sandwich. Uh, and I think it's the most popular because uh, it's a really novel concept. Uh, I don't think you really see spaghetti grilled cheese anywhere else. And then also like with the spread of social media, uh, a lot of people like to post that picture. It's a real cool photo. So people come in for it. Uh, you should definitely come uh, visit Burnt Crumbs, uh, support a local business. You know, uh, we make everything from scratch in house and we love to take care of all the locals that come in. All together, Burnt Crumbs is a great place. If you're looking for lunch, or you're just looking to snack on something fresh, I'll give it a solid 10 out of 10. And uh, back to you, Will. Sorry, Mom, but my dinner plans just got canceled. Meanwhile, Ashley Lara was more than excited to go and check out the upcoming play from APA's theater department, Flowers for Algernon. This Thursday at 7.30, APA's acting department will bring you to tears with Flowers for Algernon. We sat down with some cast members to get more info. The play is about a special ed adult who goes through an experimental process that'll make him smarter and it actually turns him into a genius. This play is definitely not a comedy, but if there was one role that is sort of comedic, it would be the two baker bakery workers, Joe and Frank, and I play Joe. Um, so Charlie's a really unique character. He's very tough to do properly because it requires a, a really broad range of performance at the start. Charlie is, he's like a child, around a 10 year old, in his mental state. But you have to also be able to capture an extremely, extremely intelligent man. And along this journey, you also have to be able to capture someone who is developing emotionally and is experiencing feelings that are completely foreign to them. Really good show. The actors, the actors are really phenomenal in it. It's going to be something else. Remember to come see your fellow Oilers in this emotionally moving play that premieres Thursday, November 10th at 7.30 in our historic auditorium. Science! Fiction! When those two come together, you get Sci-Fi Club. Reporter Max Kozik went out to see why Jar Jar Binks is now considered a cinematic masterpiece. I'd say that Sci-Fi Fellowship is pretty much a place where people can like learn new things about Sci-Fi. They can share what they think. I would describe the club as very fun and welcoming because a lot of people are scared about being a nerd openly. My favorite thing I do in Sci-Fi Club is to hold debates and have discussions about current topics that are going on in the sci-fi and fantasy world. We debate a lot about nerdy topics and uh, I'm just a nerd and if, anyone, if there's anyone out there that is a huge nerd 
loves Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Doctor Who, anything like that, join Sci-Fi Club. It's great. Um, during an average meeting, we normally talk about, uh, we watch movie trailers, or occasionally we'll do games, like we'll have uh, create your own characters, or we'll bring in board games that are science fiction related and we'll play them. When I joined as a freshman, I really enjoyed the club, and then as a sophomore, I really got to know all the people inside the club. And then as a junior, I felt that it was my responsibility as a member to keep the club going and to keep the dream alive, as it were. For those of you interested in participating, Sci-Fi Club meets in I-3 every Tuesday at lunch. Well, Oilers, that's all for today's episode. And remember to make lots of puns this week.